Ah, let us begin. Leave it to me. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Night Owl channel. Welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters out of the latest game. Coming in at number 27, we have Zhang Hui. Zhang Hui is a military general who served Wei and is Zhang Yao's second known son. He is fabled to have been a descendant of Zhang Li Mei, a general who once served under Zhang Yu. And for people who don't know, Zhang Yu was the rival of Liu Bang, who was the founder of the Han Dynasty. Valued for his passionate, studious nature, yet despised for his sour and condescending front, he eventually befriended Zhang Wei after the collapse of Shu and rebelled against the Sima family. Before we jump into how Zhang Hui has changed his playable debut back in Dynasty Warriors 7 with the introduction of the Jin Kingdom, take a look at the popularity polls to see why Zhang Hui is all the way up here at number 27. In the first popularity poll consisting of about 75,000 total votes, Zhang Hui received 872 votes putting him at the 34th spot. In the second popularity poll, and this is why he's up so high, Zhang Hui jumps up to the 10th position. It's kind of crazy for me to see him all the way up there, I don't really get it, but he's up at number 10 in the second poll. And then in my personal ranking, he's going to drop down to the 45th position. So for me, like I said, I don't really understand how Zhang Hui is so high. I guess I can kind of see it with his weapon style in the first two games that he's playable. It was a pretty interesting play style, and I can see a lot of people getting attached and you know liking that play style very much. But for me, the reason he falls so low is because of his personality. I understand, you know, Dynasty Warriors has its different characters and personalities, and that's what makes the game you know, so unique. And that's where everyone, you know, goes to their specific characters and everything like that. I've always disliked Zhang Hui's personality. Ever since he was introduced, I found it super arrogant, super cocky and narcissistic and extremely just full of himself. And I've never really gotten along or really been attached to those kind of characters in general. So he falls lower for me because of that. The only reason he's I guess relatively, you know, in the middle of my list is because of his weapon style. I would say his weapon style and the way he looks, which we'll talk a little bit more when we get to that section of the video. But before we go into all of that and how he's changed within the series, let's talk a little bit about Zhang Hui for people who don't know. Before his playable debut, he was a Wei NPC since Dynasty Warriors 2. And the reason that it's important for me to mention that is because Zhang Hui was a very interesting NPC. And I believe it was in Dynasty Warriors 5 where he really stood out as a, you know, a non-playable character because... I believe it was the Battle of Wuzhang Plains. Zhang Hui as an NPC, I think he shows up a little later as reinforcements. And if you don't check him, if you don't go and attack him right away, or you kind of just let him do whatever he does as an you know NPC AI, he pretty much runs through all of your units and he will eventually get to your commander and end up killing him. Like, I never understood why Zhang Hui was so strong as an NPC. I never understood the emphasis behind it, but... Leading up to his playable debut, you know, there's a lot of hype, at least to me, around this character because he was always a character I noticed that would do these things. I was always wondering what was the reason that they made his NPC in that particular game and perhaps in other games too, why he was always so strong. And it was just very interesting to see. And when he became a playable character, you know, it's kind of an underwhelming playable character. I was kind of expecting him to look more like Deng Ai in a sense. Uh, but, you know, he ended up looking the way he did. But that was something that always stood out for me with the character. I always noticed that when I used to play, you know, Dynasty Warriors 5 back in the day. He would always just run through people easily. And if you didn't check him, it would cause you to lose the battle. It was crazy. But with that in mind, Zhang Wei was actually made to contrast Deng Ai. He was incorporated to be a young elite character and was designed to be the new wave of the future. His ego is meant to contrast him from other characters from the cast, which it clearly does because he definitely stands out when it comes to that. Very narcissistic and it's almost like Han Dong, but like evil. You know, like evil, narcissistic, very sneaky, very selfish ambition. I mean, you can see his rebellion coming from a mile away throughout his story. For his playable appearance, he is described as a young, studious man who has a respectable ability to instantly read the battlefield. And this is evident within some of the games. He's a very intelligent person. He's able to dissect people's personalities and had a keen understanding and intelligence when it came to battling and manipulating the chaos to his advantage. He believes himself to be an impeccable and almighty genius who is incapable of committing a single error in his strategies. But due to his arrogance and spiteful demeanor, there aren't many fellow officers who 
trust him. Now, historically, I would say that is true. Reading through his historical information, Sima Zhao uh, kind of like foresaw his rebellion coming. And then within the series, I don't think anyone, games don't go that far to where Zhang Hui incites his rebellion, except I think in Dynasty Warriors 8 when he attacks uh, the retired Sima Yi and Sima Yi actually halts his rebellion. But the other two games, you know, Dynasty Warriors 7, Dynasty Warriors 9, they don't really discuss his rebellion because the game's cut off before he rebels. Once Chengdu is taken and it's fallen, the games end. So it happens after Chengdu falls and he takes control of the Shu troops there and tries to start a rebellion from there. Like, but like I said, Zhang Hui was a very insightful, intelligent, and knowledgeable person ever since he was extremely young. And it's unfortunate that he was using his talents and abilities to, to further his own ambition, which ended up getting him killed. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into how Zhang Hui has changed within the Dynasty Warriors series. And we're going to start off with his appearance. So like I said, the character's appearance was fine. I like the armor look, the light armor, slick kind of, you know, he looks like an agile finesse type character and I definitely lean towards the way he looks. I don't have anything against the way he looks. I would say mainly his demeanor and that throws me off when he's like doing like the hair flip and he's like he is like a very vain character. He's like again he's like Zhang He and Han Dong put together but like worse. He's got that vain narcissistic attitude but he has the intelligence to like cohesively interject his thoughts and concerns about whatever it is they're talking about. So what I'm saying is like Zhang Hui has the ability he has this personality, but he's very good at concealing it, I would say, in a sense. Like, he's very good at not being so narcissistic to the point where it's grounds for, like, an immediate arrest. It's like, it's like on the cusp. He's, like, towing that line all the time. Like, yeah, he has his, like, outbursts when he's like, oh, you know, people wish they could be as good as me or something of that nature. Or they're jealous of my talents or something like that. However, he balances it out with, you know, intelligent and actually useful, you know, suggestions and plans. And because of his intelligence, he was able to suggest plans of actions for battles that had merit behind them because he had plans that he would give to Sima Zhao that would end up succeeding and he ended up getting promoted and you know building that trust to a point where Sima Zhao trusted what Zhang Hui was saying. So because of that balance I don't think there was any real big suspicion until you know Shu had fallen and then that's you know the game's cut off so they don't really they don't really go into it but you know according to history Sima Zhao already had the foresight of you know this is somebody who can potentially betray you later on because of that burning concealed ambition that he has. Now, moving on to Zhang Hui's weapon style, it's probably the biggest draw for the character in general. It's probably why so many people like him is because of his weapon style. So in the first two games, he's going to have the flying sword, which I know is ridiculous to give a character a weapon that actually floats, but the game has a magical element to it. It's not extremely realistic, but I'm not going to lie, it's a very fun play style. It's extremely fun to play with the flying swords. I can see why people are drawn to that weapon style but extremely unrealistic and uh, that's probably another reason for me why he's a little lower the play style was fun yes but come on who has flying swords flying swords man come on i remember when it first got introduced into the game and i saw that and i was like really they gave this guy floating swords wow okay be that as it may like i said the weapon style is pretty fun and then in dynasty warriors 9 he gets the fan sword so we've already covered the fan sword with sao shu and maybe one other person but i didn't really like the fan sword i actually got better playing with shang hui since i've already played with sao shu there's a couple combos that i used that avoided using the regular basic attack because the regular basic attack for that weapon is so bad when you charge in and you like stand in one place and the weapon goes around you for a second it leaves you vulnerable and open to getting countered and the move set for the weapon is not the greatest it definitely has a couple of decent moves and i was able to manipulate it to where it made it easier for me to play with but still not one of my favorites and you know i had to avoid using the regular basic attack to do some damage to the officers the missile attacks for each of the game were pretty decent the flying swords one were pretty cool and then the ones in Dynasty Warriors 9. I believe he actually had different ones in Dynasty Warriors 9. Because he had a fan sword, he did not have the same, you know, ghostly moose out attacks that he had from Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8. I'm pretty confident he had completely different moose owls for Dynasty Warriors 9, which were fine. I mean, they weren't anything too crazy. Uh, the aerial moose owl attack with the flying sword was probably my favorite one. It was really cool, very powerful. Huge AOE damage. Uh, weapon style, not super realistic. It's just extremely fun to play as. That's, again, why he's in the middle of the list for me. And that's probably why he's 10th in the second place. I can't see people being attracted to his personality. I don't see it. The way he looks, fine. You know, his weapon style, fine. You know, 
Voice acting, if you want to go that far, people like the way he sounds, cool. I can't see people being genuinely attracted to his personality. It's just such a terrible personality. If somebody actually genuinely likes Zhang Hui's personality because they resonate with that, you might want to, you know, look into yourself, you know, meditate or something. And now moving on to Zhang Hui's voice acting. He had the same voice actor for Dynasty Wars 7 and 8. I refuse to bow my head to one such as him. I do not consider what we are doing wrong at all. And then he gets a different one for Dynasty Warriors 9. The more that I see, the more I come to realize how impregnable this land truly is. This voice acting was excellent. I mean, for the character, for the personality that he is, for who Zhang Hui was and what he, you know, what he did. I mean, that guy, I mean, the voice actor played his role perfectly for him. That you can hear that narcissistic, egotistical vibe from the way the voice actor played him. I think, he, you know, they did a great job voicing Zhang Hui and it fits him perfectly. It's why I don't like him because they just do it so well. Uh, the voice acting did a commendable job with Zhang Hui. Can't complain at all. It, it was great. I just don't like the character. <laughs> Now, moving on to his significant battles, his relationships, and his deaths. We're going to start off with his significant battles. He only had a couple significant battles under the Jin Kingdom or underway before they became Jin. So one is the battle, is the rebellion at Shu Chun. So Zhuge Dan's rebellion, he played a very important role there. And then I would say he also played a big role in the fall of Shu. So starting off with Zhuge Dan's rebellion, Zhuge Dan was an original character from the Jin Kingdom, and he ends up, you know, rebelling against, in a way, he betrays them, goes to Wu, and then he leads an attack against them. There was a general under the current leader of the Wu Kingdom who was ordered to go assist Zhuge Dan with the rebellion. The general who was sent to help Zhuge Dan had disagreements with his relatives, and those relatives actually left Wu and defected to Wei. When Zhang Hui received news about their defection, he suggested to Sima Zhao to ask them to write a secret letter to the general who was ordered to help Zhuge Dan's rebellions and lied to him, saying that the leader of the Wu Kingdom was displeased with the general for failing to conquer Xiu Chun. So when the general receives this fake letter from his family that was encouraged by Zhang Hui, he ends up surrendering as well to Wei, which leaves Zhuge Dan stranded with no reinforcements. Because of that, Zhuge Dan was easily defeated. And because of that plan, Sima Zhao actually started to regard Zhang Hui even higher. I think that's why he has such a, you know, quote unquote, bigger role in Dynasty Warriors. Because, like, you can see Sima Zhao's reliance on Zhang Hui. Because throughout his story, he would constantly ask Zhang Hui to command troops or lead the forces or whatever it was. He, like, Zhang Hui had a pretty big part in helping Sima Zhao take down Shu and being a part of that story. Like, I would say he had a pretty significant role. I believe it started here in Shou Chun. Sima Zhao had so much reliability and trust in Zhang Hui. When he went to consult his officers and generals about what to do about the weakening, you know, force of Shu. Shu Kingdom was falling apart. It was a shell of its former self. Sima Zhao was recognizing that this would be a good time to take out Shu for good. Out of all the people he consulted, only Zhang Hui agreed that Shu could be conquered, and he assisted Sima Zhao in formulating a strategy for the conquest of Shu. This eventually led to the battle of, I believe, Tian Shui, and then right after that, you know, he was saying, I'm going to go talk to Sima Zhao. He talked to Deng about it and he said this would be a great time to pressure Shu and take them down for good and that eventually led to you know Sima Zhao and the Wei forces taking down Shu and basically you know bringing an end to the three kingdoms and I guess we'll just talk about his death right away because it, it just goes in tandem with with this event right after the battle of Chengdu Zhang Hui who had long harbored the intention of rebelling against Wei finally saw his opportunity to so with that, he betrayed the person that he disliked the most. Apparently, he, di he didn't like Deng Ai at all. So he initiated this rebellion by planning a fake ruse and getting Deng Ai arrested. After Zhang Hui gets Deng Ai arrested, he, he forges more fake letters and he tries to rally everyone within Chengdu under his banner. He's trying to get as many people as he can to support his attack against the Sima family. On the day of Zhang Hui's death, mutiny and chaos within the city broke out. Arrows were being fired in all directions. Part of Zhang Hui's plan, he had some officers detained to keep them from getting in his way that broke out of captivity, regrouped with their men and attacked Zhang Hui and the former Shu general, Zhang Wei. So apparently this is something that I didn't even know about. None of the games really go over it and I didn't really know when I saw it in Dynasty Wars 9 and his ending, it actually surprised me a little bit because I didn't really look too deep into Zhang Hui's, you know, history before I started doing the series and everything. But seeing him form a friendship with Zhang Wei in order to help strengthen his, you know, attempt to attack and rebel against the Sima family was quite shocking to me. I mean, 
Think about these two people. Like, Jung Wei is a devoted, you know, Shu member who was pushing as hard as he could in order to, you know, realize the dreams of his fallen masters. And he ends up teaming up with Zhang Hui, who's like this, you know, arrogant, completely opposite character to Zhang Wei. It was just, I thought it was crazy. So the city's in chaos. Zhang Wei advises Zhang Hui to kill the people who are causing trouble. They killed about five or six of them, but they were eventually overwhelmed and they were killed. But yeah, it was just crazy to read about Zhang Hui and, you know, even Zhang Wei's death because, you know, they were both there and they both got killed. Now, moving on to his relationships, he doesn't have many relationships in the game because he's such a <laughs> he's such a narcissist and he's such a like to himself person and whatever it takes to get his own personal ambition that he doesn't really have good relationships within the game. I think he only has really, I guess you could say three, but mainly two relationships and that's with Sima Zhao and Deng Ai. He also has a relationship with Zhu Ge Don, but it's not a friendly one. And then you can even say he has a relationship with Zhang Wei. So starting off with Sima Zhao and Deng Ai, I would say he had a similar relationship to both of them in that it was positive, but it was a like fake positive relationship. I would say he had more disdain towards Deng Ai because he was made to be the opposite of Deng Ai. He just genuinely didn't like him. And then because of the way his personality is and doing whatever he can for, for his own personal good, for his own personal ambition, he's pretty much just using them, waiting for an opportunity to strike out and you know do what he originally wanted to do so the relationship i'm pretty sure was a fabricated one it wasn't anything that was sincere or genuine you know it just seemed like zhang hui always looked out for himself and was always planning on how to get there for himself he never really cared about anybody else and and he only had those relationships in order to further his own personal goals and then his relationship with zhuge don was definitely a negative relationship he was constantly calling out the guy in dynasty warriors 9. he was spot on with the guy's personality though read him like a book and he had no problem being rude to zhuge don and speaking out against the gene officer and perhaps that's why it was so easy for him to plan against the rebellion against Zhuge Don because he probably didn't even like the guy. So, And then finally, his last relationship with Jiang Wei, it's super tiny. I mean, I didn't really even know that was a thing, but he has his ending with Jiang Wei. Actually, he decides he's going to rebel against Sima Zhao and attempt to kill and take over and become the ruler of China. But again, it's a very similar relationship to Sima Zhao and Deng Ai in that, you know, actually both of them, they're only working together so they can achieve the goal that they personally want. I don't think it's a genuine relationship and even if it did succeed, it probably would have ended up with them fighting and killing each other. And that's pretty much it for Zhang Hui. He was an okay character. I think all the good things about the character is definitely all the things outside of who Zhang Hui is, his appearance, you know, the way he looks, the way he fights, and then the way he sounds. All good things. I mean, they, I think it fits him perfectly as a character. But his personality is probably one of the worst in the Dynasty Warrior series. And I don't understand how he was so high in that second poll. Again, maybe because of the weapon, the way he looks, all that good stuff. But Zhang Hui, is, he's just not a favorite of mine. He never will be because of the personality that he has. But that's all I have for Zhang Hui here. He was an overpowered NPC that turned into uh, kind of a brat. <laughs> But he's an extremely narcissistic character. He's probably the most narcissistic character within the game. Very full of himself. Very cocky. I definitely has a god complex. You know, thinks he's perfect. Can't be beat and all that. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have for Zhang Hui here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about Zhang Hui. If you guys, you know, actually like Zhang Hui, let me know what you guys like about him. Or if you guys dislike him like I do, let me know what you don't like. All that good stuff down below in the comment section. But that's all I have for the video, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Shoot!